Good morning, everybody. It's Christian from the Senate Education with the four majors and that's update for the 11th of July, 2013. Hi, folks. Have you had a fantastic training day yesterday? And boy, did we get some momentum yesterday. I'm looking at a daily chart, by the way. So if you're looking at this candle, I'm thinking, what the hell happened? That is what happened yesterday, guys. Mr. Bernanke opened his trap. Not being horrible, I mean, but he opened his mouth and he spoke. And that's what happened in the market, guys. And... Um, it was fair to say that as we head into this major support and resistance level here, the weekly support and resistance level here, the 23.6, we've had prior support or bounce of this area. It was more likely to see some sort of consolidation, but boy, did we get a consolidation candle. That is a huge candle by any short term. I can't think of anything. I think we had, I think it moved in excess of 445 pips, guys. From the low to the current high, 445 pips. And in doing so, very much stamping its um, clear objective at this area. So now we know clearly that this is potentially a major support level for the near term. Break this this candle moving higher broke before it was trading below the the, the monthly Fib retracement level here at the 38.2 above the 1300. Clearly trading well above it. So now trading into a lot of resistance here as well as into the uh, 38.2 on the weekly. You can see at this time, not too long ago, we've also had prior resistance. So we are in a consolidating band now. Price has moved quite a lot. But by doing so, it's now forced it to move. And it all stems down to Bernanke saying that um, for the foreseeable future, it still seems the way he looks at everything in plain English, he still thinks that uh, the US dollar needs to maintain its quantitative easing uh, policy. And therefore, they will keep continuing to print money for the foreseeable future. He doesn't see enough um, growth out there. Uh, especially on the unemployment figures um, to see any change in his in his stance. So huge move to the upside for the euro against US dollar. Any US dollar crosses felt the pain yesterday evening. Uh, we were looking at 300 plus pips on, on most of the majors and your cross pairs. So as it stands at the moment now, trading about 38.2, going to be consolidative. The daily 38.2 is now being acted as a support. So we're trading in a very, very strong consolidation area, guys. So if we go to our forward time frame, you can see the institution is in play right now. If we can get above the city point here, above the 13134 mark very soon, that will ideally then uh, allow us to trade very confident, confidently uh, with, with less um, risk involved because it's a lot cleaner once we get above here. If we get above the 38.2 here, then we can look to the, the daily uh, FIB level on the bounce, 23.6 here, 13. 3200 which is a good 170 pips away but overall back up towards the next weekly fib which is the 50 percent which is a good 341 pips away so wait for the consolidation if this is to be um, just a knee-jerk reaction then we might want to see a break and close lower than 38.2 on the monthly here which is below the 1300 mark because the monthly uh, the 1300 is a major support and resistance level going back to early 2010 in particular so if we can get back, back below that again then we know that the outcome for the euro is still one of negativity at the moment now with yesterday's news it's moved the market so quickly but in order for it to be a genuine uh, trigger signal get above the city point two here because we had a massive move we've seen the pullback on the last four hour candle in play right now we've got another seven just above another hour or so to go if we can get above the city point two going into the, the close of this week um, then look to target the prior highs, <clears throat> excuse me, but to these FIB highs here, the daily and the weekly for the foreseeable future. Sterling, here we go, massive move, and that came on the major support and resistance level. I mentioned yesterday, if this level had been breached, the outcome for Sterling would have been one of very, very negative, a negative outcome. Because this level here, guys, and if I can go to my monthly just to show you, you can see where price is trading. Those are the 20, 2008 lows, okay? You can see my monthly high, which is the high back in 2007 before we saw the crash, to the lows in 2000 and 2008. You can see where price is trading right now. That, that, that 23.6 is the major support and resistance level FIB that we've seen price since 2010 finding support, 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 break, pullback, a bearish engulfing candle, uh, an inverted shooting star, and then we've seen price moving lower. It's imperative it hangs on to this level, guys, because the longer she spends below 23.6, the more the outcome for sterling against US dollar is one of negative. So with the move that we saw with Bernanke, is that going to be the um, safety ring, the safety net, if you want to use that term? Because 
if she hadn't, if Sterling hadn't found support there, then we would have seen a major fall to the 2010 low here before we saw the, the all-time low here back in 2008 being attempted, which would have been a massive 1,500 pip move at least. So very, very important. Yeah, back to the daily again. You can see the massive move to the upside, but in doing so, she's traded straight into the weekly fib, the 23.6. So now she needs to get above that. Ideally, she's still trading below the, the monthly fib, which is still negative. Okay, um, this this major fib level here, 23.6, is the 15300 mark, which is that major support and resistance level I mentioned. When I looked at the monthly chart, that goes that's been a supporting price for so long over so many years. Now she's spending more time below it. Not a really good sign. So it's imperative if she's going to bounce, she needs to get above that 23.6 as soon as possible to see any further upside. The failure to do so would revert would see sterling reverting back to its negativity and if she trades back below the zero line over here this major support then we should be looking for potentially curtains for sterling i hate saying it but we could see a major drop overall over the next couple of months so it's important if she's going to bounce here she needs to bounce strong she needs to get above the 23.6 here above this 15300 mark and she can kick on long because that if she gets above here then we know for the foreseeable future we should be looking for nothing nothing better than sterling highs us dollar swiss franc the same outcome if euro and sterling are, are moving up then you expect the us dollar swiss franc to be doing the total opposite and sure enough look what happened here guys not too long ago a month ago uh, two months ago in fact we actually saw price getting above this major support and resistance level here on the monthly 23.6 however pull back which is yeah it's expected okay but we want to price then to farm support and then to kick on because price made all that effort to actually get above it we wanted this to see it okay, great to be genuine sentiment. Then it needs to, 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 to take that momentum and to move on with it. But it didn't. It broke below. Then we had another kick up. And then we had a bearish engulfing. So these tweezer tops at a major support and resistance level actually tell us that sentiment was no longer favoring the upside. And what happened? The outcome was one of negativity. Here we go. We're back into it again. Bullish engulfing candle prior to yesterday uh, yesterday's movement. And what happened yesterday? Instead of finding support, which is what we'd ideally like to see, what did it do? It took it all away. Bernanke came up to the, and he spoke and sure enough, that was the outcome. So straight away, the 23.6, yet again, being a major resistance for US dollar against the Swiss franc. And if this continues, then the outcome is going to be one of negativity and you're targeting back towards a 23.6 for the foreseeable future. So if you're looking for any opportunities, look to see if the actual charts, we've got our four you can see it's trading straight into the institution on the 4-hour. If it can close, if the 4-hour can close below that, then we should be looking for shorts towards that 92665 mark. Get below that, then we're trading towards that 8, what's it, the double 8685 mark. So very, very important. If this is to be a genuine move with negativity, then we need to see the 4-hour candle being closed. So wait for a 4-hour candle close lower. And then your objective is for the foreseeable future to short the US dollar against the Swiss franc and we were heading, our first target would be to the 9277 9, mark. And as I mentioned, the next one would be in the 88 and change. Last period of the day, US dollar Japanese yen. And here again, also falling over. We had, as I mentioned, if we were to see any further upside, it needed to stay above the 50% retracement because we'd been above here before. However, yesterday's remarks from Bernanke actually saw the US dollar fall against its yen. The, the, the end counterpart and taking it below the 50 period 50 percent fib retracement on the daily which is a one of negativity you can see before a lot of resistance got above it pulled back but it didn't bounce we went to the bounce on the on, on the pullback that felt to materialize so we had the breakout the pullback and the continuation back towards the next level which should have been the 38.2 level found support morning star and then prices headed back up towards our weekly fib got above it the pullback and then the continuation back up towards a 50 50 uh, percent retracement Got above it, but there was nobody on the other end to really push it. That sentiment just dried up very, very quickly. And then Bernanke's announcement yesterday or the evening actually just told us that uh, sentiment's weak. And what happened was the US dollar overall is still looking weak. He needs to pump more money into it. And we saw the US dollar roll over. So now in the four-hour time frame, our resistance level is going to be the 50% retracement at the 99900 mark. You can see clearly on our four-hour, Price is finding support now on the institution. If this is to be really negative, this institutional moving average on the 4-hour needs to be breached. So we need to see a 4-hour counter close below that. And that would indicate that the sentiment is genuinely negative. And then we can target. The first target would be our weekly FIB, which is the 23.6 here at 97.14.
get below that, we're targeting the monthly fib at the 38.2, which is a good, below this area, good, 296 pips away, guys, just short, just below the 94.38 mark. So we are seeing price finding support on the institution, moving average on most of the four hour time frames. It's imperative that that particular uh, four hour uh, time frame, we see a bearish engulfing or bullish engulfing counter close below the institution, because that will tell us that the sentiment is genuinely looking negative on those time frames. And if you do get that, then look to see where the targets are, touch your money management, and then pull the trigger. Make sure that your indicator box is giving you that sentiment indication, and then trade confidently. Other than that, keep it simple, guys. Back it up with some money management, and you're on a winning note. I'll leave it for today. Look at the news to see if there's anything out there. Keep it simple, and trade serenely. Cheers, guys.